Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert. Now you may remember a little while ago that Rich from Create Pro in the UK took my 2010 MacBook Pro, my cheese grater, and did his magic and souped it up to be a 2015 6.1 spec. Now I've had a lot of emails from people saying, can you show us the performance you're getting? How's it working out? Is it the best thing you've ever spent your money on? The answer to all those things are it's working brilliantly. Uh, yes, it's a thousand quid, very, very well spent. Um, so I, what I thought I'd do is I'd take the Mac power test session that Russ designed when he was testing his MacBook Air and his Mac Pro trash can, and I'd put my 2010 Mac Pro with 2015 spec through the same kind of process and see what we get. Now, you won't hear very much in this session because, quite frankly, you don't want to hear what it's doing, but accept it from me that it's performing very, very well indeed. Um, the reason I haven't done this any sooner is purely because I've been doing that good old-fashioned thing called work. Um, so let's go over to the Mac. So you won't hear very much in this session. You'll hear me chatting, obviously, but let's go over to the Mac and see how this thing performs. So here we are, Mac Pro, and let me show you the playback engine so you can see what we're doing. We're not using the HDX card at the moment. We are just using the built-in output. You won't hear anything. Quite frankly, you don't want to hear this many booms doing anything, to be honest. Um, 64 samples, as low as we can go. Um, no dish cache, none of that. Hit OK. And you can see here we are currently running 50 instances of boom. So let's play back and see what happens in the system usage window. On the way up. Yep, 50 booms. Not bad going. Now I've never done a track using 50 booms. 75% it's hovering. Okay, let's uh, go up to let's go up to sixty. Fifty to sixty. Okay, that's sixty booms. Doesn't look very exciting, but it's all good stuff. Yep, stable at sixty. Let's go up to seven. Let's go up to eighty. Wait for it to do its thing. Okay, so eighty instances of boom. No, it's peaked out at 80. So let's go back to 70. Okay, let's try 70. Too much too soon. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. 70 instances of boom at 64 samples. However, if we go to 128 samples, which is still pretty damn low on the whole sample rate settings scale thing, and I go all the way up to 128, It's going to take a little while to obviously install all these and make them all active. Right, 128. Maybe a little bit far. Let's go down to 100. So 
So at a hundred and uh, speaking too soon. Let's go to eighty. Bear in mind, one hundred and twenty-eight samples is still pretty low. Climbing, yep, yeah, tailing off about 76, 77%. So, 79 instances of boom at 128 samples buffer size. That's ridiculous. Absolutely ludicrous. I'm loving that. Okay, so that's effectively our RAM test, if you like. Let's now add to that some audio. And we will whack in at first a hundred tracks audio. Now, each of these tracks of audio has a channel strip and a D verb on it. And you also know that this particular test is regions of audio chopped at regions of one at intervals of one second so it's a pretty heavyweight test so that's a hundred tracks of audio with a d verb and a channel strip on and 80 instances of boom running at 128 samples. That's just ludicrous. And we're only hitting 77% on a six core machine, which Pro Tools we know due to hyper threading sees as a 12 core. That's ridiculous. How far can we go? Well, let's go to the 428 tracks that is just madness so we know we had no problem with 60 tracks let's try 60 tracks of boom with all 128 tracks of audio at 64 samples. And just to make sure, using the built-in output, built-in output, 64 samples. Incredible. No disk caching. Here we go. That is just ridiculous. I never want to hear what this thing sounds like, but that amazes me. I'm very, very happy with that. I'm pretty sure someone's going to pick this to bits and say it's not a proper test. You've not done this. You've not done that. But how far do you want us to go to prove that these things work? Personally, if I find I'm using 90 tracks of audio in a song or in a session, it's probably 80 tracks too many. Well, maybe not. It's certainly 40 tracks too many. Um, why do you need to go to that extent? Yes, I understand in film and TV post-production mixes, but in my world, in the music world, all I have to do is rem remind myself of the old adage that I quote all the time, the Beatles had only four tracks. And that seems to make it all better. The fact that I'm running 60 odd instances of boom is just ridiculous. I don't think I ever run sessions with, with 60 tracks 
let alone 60 instruments, let alone another 128 tracks worth of plugins, deverbs, and channel strips. I'm blown away by the performance I get out of a five year old machine. So, what to do next? So, pretty impressive results, I think you'll agree, considering that that machine there is over five years old. Not bad going, I don't think. Um, so what happens next? Well, Rich and the guys at Create Pro are going to start drip feeding me tech for my Mac Pro. And we'll see how far we can take it. We'll upgrade the processor from 6 to 12 cores. We'll upgrade the RAM from 48 to the full 64 gig. Who knows how much we'll be able to run on 64 gigs. Um, but what we're also going to do is we'll take... Um, one of the PCI slots, and we're going to put in PCI-based flash storage and see how that affects the machine either as the main system drive or maybe you might even try using it as a sample drive. So things like Vienna and East-West and the larger sample libraries will load super fast. But that is still to come. For now, that's been my Mac Pro. Um, I've been James from Pro Tools Expert, and I'll see you again soon for some more Gear Talk.